हाँ जी गुड इवनिंग गाइस आई वेलकम यू फॉर टुडे सेशन टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द इम्पॉर्टेंट टॉपिक्स ऑफ रेस्पिरेटरी मेडिसिन सो गाइस प्लीज शो मी योर प्रेजेंस बाय सेइंग हेलो एंड वेव योर हैंड्स सो दैट वी कैन स्टार्ट टुडे क्लास and please confirm me about all the audio video thing that everything is good about the technology we are using or is there any delay or a lag can we start हाँ जी हेलो आदिल खान सो एवरीथिंग ऑडियो वीडियो इज ओके गुड इवनिंग फॉर इट्स पी एट द रेट पी ओके सो शेल वी स्टार्ट नाउ thank you thank you everyone so today we are going to discuss another important topic of the respiratory medicine uh, this topic which why i have chosen uh, i am just going to give you a clue that and you have to tell me what i am going to talk about yes so this topic is basically is going to be you know in a story based uh, question or uh, you know it can be radiological topic also and uh, you know there are so many infective causes and non infective causes also of this topic so now i am giving you a clue this topic is radiologically infective and non infective so can you please tell me which topic i am going to discuss from respiratory medicine although the whole respiratory medicine can be based upon the radiology also we have discussed pneumonia we have discussed asthma and uh, i think uh, copd we discussed uh, no we haven't it is not copd it is going to be the pleural effusion first of all so we are going to discuss about first of all pleural effusion right okay ji so guys what is pleural effusion pleural the name itself is beta what pleural right means there is some fluid which is getting accumulated in the pleural cavity the name itself is suggesting pleural effusion effusion kya hota hai beta collection of the fluid in the cavity collection of fluid in the cavity right yeah p at the rate p it is going to be p e p e beta pulmonary embolism bhi hota hai this we have discussed already right so pleural effusion now what is pleural effusion by definition first of all we have to understand that it's the extra accumulation it's the extra or you can also say abnormal accumulation or collection accumulation or collection of fluid in the pleural spaces in the pleural spaces right now what i have written i am just going to give you a you know uh, explanation of this line in a diagram let's understand this suppose this is a lung right beta ye kya hai this is going to be a lung now this is the chest wall over here in blue color now we do have two things over here first there is a layer which is attached to the lungs and there is another layer which is attached to the chest wall these are called as the haan ji what is this called as this is called as parietal pleura parietal pleura and this one is called as visceral pleura visceral pleura now in between these two spaces in between parietal pleura and the visceral pleura there is continuously a flow of the fluid kitna hota hai beta continuously there is a flow of the free uh, flow of the fluid at the rate of 0.01 ml per hour this is the normal fluid which is going through this spaces now put your pens down and understand the concept why this fluid is running in this spaces see now do one exercise with me inhale 
yes again let's inhale when we are inhaling our lungs are expanding right and they are going to touch to the chest wall over here they need some space to expand and they need to glide upon the parietal and the pleural spaces and we need some lubrication over there so that lungs when they expand they don't you know stuck up or they don't show working and this role is being played by this fluid which is present in the pleural spaces and normal flow of this fluid i have told you the normal fluid at the rate of 0.01 ml per hour now coming back to the definition i have told you that this thing that it is the extra accumulation or the abnormal accumulation or collection of the fluid in the pleural spaces so what does it means beta it means when this fluid is extra accumulated apart from this you know let's say this is the fluid which is getting accumulated accumulating 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 over here right what it is going to do it is going to compress the lungs it is going to compress the lungs based upon how much the fluid has entered over here now you suppose that in pink color the lung has collapsed so this is called as compressive collapse so it is going to make the lung collapse understand the concept over here initially the cp angle postophrenic angle was at this level but now my dear friend the fluid has accumulated this much that it has pushed the fluid to get compressed or to get collapsed so it is going to make the lung collapse or it is going to compress the lung this we have understood till now from the definition i repeat this is the extra accumulation of the fluid in the pleural spaces now before i and enter into the detail i would like to know that i am writing over here that this fluid is running at the rate of 0.01 ml per hour means since we have taken birth this fluid is running and let's say our age is 30 years or 30 but 25 years it means this fluid has been getting accumulated in the lungs uh, sorry in the pleural spaces is it right or wrong no it is not getting accumulated over here why it is not getting accumulating over here because my dear friend we do have lymphatic systems this fluid comes and it gets drained through the lymphatic system and then it goes into the venous circulation right now why question number 2 or discussion number 2 why this abnormal fluid gets accumulated in this pleural spaces there can be two main causes yes beta there can be two main causes of the pleural effusion two main causes now what are these two main causes first of all first of all it is going to be it is going to be a transudative cause and exudative cause transudative and it is going to be exudative cause it is going to be a transudative cause and it is going to be a exudative cause transudative you can easily remember just by remembering that it is going to be a non infectious cause kya hoga beta it is going to be a non infectious cause whereas exudative is going to be a cause because of infection it is going to be a infectious cause it is going to be a infectious cause so transudative and exudative causes are there do understand this concept very clearly transudative means beta ki koi infection nahi hai no infection whereas exudative means there is a infectious cause first of all what are the causes of transudative pleural effusion very very important and put a star mark over here this question is the favorite question of the examiner they just write you a history and they if there is a history of fever then it is going to be a exudative or infectious causes or if in the question you find that there is no history of fever and only patient is having breathlessness patient is having you know dry cough patient is having you know difficulty in breathing particularly in supine position but there is no history of fever i repeat no history of fever then think of the non infectious or let's say transudative causes now first of all what is the most common transudative causes the most common transudative cause is hypoproteinemia hypoproteinemia proteinemia particularly if we have to talk about which protein then hypoalbuminemia is the cause now put your pens down and understand why hypoproteinemia is the cause of this transudative pleural effusion we know what is the role or what is the function of the albumin the main role or the function of the albumin is to push back the fluid into the vessels into from extra vascular to intra vascular right but now my dear friend when the albumin level or let's say protein level is reduced hypoproteinemia is there there will be no one to push the fluid back into the vessels so wherever they will the fluid will find some extra spaces or free spaces it will start accumulating over 
there and the pleural cavity is the perfect space to get an abnormal collection of the fluid in the absence or in low levels of proteins so this point we have made very clear second thing you have to understand is congestive heart failure another most common cause congestive heart failure my dear friend put your pens down particularly i am talking about left ventricular failure left ventricular failure understand the concept over here ki hota kya hai just a second let me put this big camera on understand the concept from here the fluid is coming right this is inferior vena cava this is superior vena cava right the fluid is getting drained where fluid is getting drained into the right side of the heart then it is going into the pulmonary circulation and from the pulmonary circulation it is coming into the left side of the heart right now left ventricle if it is not pumping properly what is going to happen the fluid is going to get accumulated in the atria then in the pulmonary circulation and gradually gradually what will happen it will start oozing down into the pleural spaces so do remember this thing congestive heart failure particularly left heart failure is going to be another important cause right okay ji so we have discussed about the two main causes that one was what beta one was hypoproteinemia another was congestive heart failure the third important cause is going to be the nephrotic syndrome nephrotic syndrome it is going to be the nephrotic syndrome now why in nephrotic syndrome we know this there is a loss of the proteins basic thing we know this thing and i have already explained you that in the absence of low absence or in low level of proteins there will be no one to push the fluid into the circulation and the fluid will start accumulating in the pleural spaces another important cause is beta what another important cause is going to be the cirrhosis of liver it is going to be the cirrhosis of liver we know that the protein is responsible or liver is the factory of the proteins if liver is not functioning properly if there is cirrhosis then obviously the proteins are not going to be there or less proteins are going to be formed and then again my dear friend no one will be there to push the fluid into the vessels into the intravascular and then the fluid will start accumulating into the free spaces particularly that of pleural spaces so we have learned till now that what are the main causes of transudative non infectious is hypoproteinemia one congestive heart failure then is nephrotic syndrome and then we have cirrhosis of the liver now let's jump to the exudative causes or infectious causes in respiratory medicine if we talk about the most common cause of exudative pleural effusion then it is going to be the pneumonia first of all it is going to be infectious causes pneumonia or it can be tuberculosis also right pneumonia we know we have discussed earlier in the classes there are so many pathogen it can be bacterial it can be viral it can be fungal but most likely the bacterial pneumonias are the one which causes uh, exudative type of pleural effusion right apart from this my dear friend then we have is bronchogenic carcinomas bronchogenic bronchogenic carcinomas two things why bronchogenic carcinoma causes exudative type of pleural effusion because there is blockage in the lymphatics i have explained earlier whatever the normal fluid which was flowing at the rate of 0.01 ml per hour it was supposed to drain into the lymphatics but we know that in any carcinoma the lymphatics gets blocked and the fluid will start accumulating over here and carcinomas or malignancies they are uh, you know uh, immunocompromised states and the person has the chances to get the infections right okay then is another pulmonary in pulmonary infarctions pulmonary infarction right then we have another important cause that is called as meg syndrome meg syndrome right then we have rheumatoid arthritis some connective tissue disorder sle systemic lupus erythematosus in systemic lupus erythematosus pleuritis is commonly seen or even carditis particularly if they ask we will discuss sle in detail but just because i have mentioned sle then in sle they ask you a question what kind of endocarditis do we see we see leibman sack endocarditis this is another topic we will discuss in detail so what are the causes guys quickly revise transudative and exudative type of pleural effusion transudative means non infectious one is hypoproteinemia congestive heart failure left ventricular failure or nephrotic syndrome and cirrhosis of the liver 
and what do we have in exudative type of pleural effusion one it is going to be the pneumonia tuberculosis it is going to be the bronchogenic carcinoma pulmonary infarctions make syndrome now guys understand the concept what is make syndrome it's basically a triad of three things what are these three things it is triad of three things one it is ca ovary ca ovary is there ascites ascites and pleural effusion is there pleural effusion is there so this is another one liner mcq they simply asked what is the make syndrome i am sure you must have read in gynecology so make syndrome put a star mark over here in make syndrome now let's go to back to this picture uh, okay i will draw another picture understand the concept over here i am going to talk about the clinical features before i proceed into the clinical features let me re explain you the picture so this was the chest wall right this was the chest wall right and we do had this uh, visceral pleura and we do had this parietal pleura among this there was a abnormal accumulation of the fluid suppose this patient is in sitting position right this patient is in sitting position and he is having pleural fluid over here pleural fluid is over here so will he be able to breathe properly or he will have some difficulty yes he will have difficulty in breathing because the lung is collapsed over here proper oxygenation is not going to be maintained because 100% of the lung is not expanding only some part depending upon you know how much the fluid has been accumulating the lung is going to function properly so definitely the patient is going to have problem in breathing or patient is going to have shortness of breath in standing even right but now understand the concept if i am the patient and my lungs are filled with fluid as soon as i will lie down on the bed i will go in the supine position what will happen whole this fluid is going to take over the lung and the lungs are going to get drowned or they are going to get more collapsed because of the pressure effect and the patient is going to have orthopnea what is orthopnea increase shortness of breath or increase difficulty in breathing or increase in dyspnea while in supine position right so what is the first very important clinical feature beta the first very important clinical feature is going to be what it is going to be the dyspnea and what kind of dyspnea it is going to be there right beta do remember this thing it is going to be the orthopnea it is going to be orthopnea underline this thing very important orthopnea is going to be there second my dear friend most likely if it is a transudative pleural effusion right then it is going patient is going to have cuff what kind of cuff patient is going to have if it is going to be the pleural effusion and particularly that of transudative type of pleural effusion then the patient is going to have dry cuff dry cuff now put your pens down and understand why patient is going to have dry cuff why not productive cuff to <coughs> produce sputum we need to have some hypertrophy of the mucus gland or goblet cell hyperplasia but over here where is the problem it is the problem is outside the lungs mucus gland had got nothing to do in particular type <coughs> transudative type of pleural effusion but yes i do agree with your point that if there is exudative type of pleural effusion if there is pneumonia or tuberculosis or maybe in you know in bronchogenic carcinoma there can be some abnormality in the mucus gland and it can produce cuff but majority of the patients they initially come with a dry cuff or irritating cuff now there is a little bit inflammation if it is exudative so inflammation can obviously cause you know uh, uh, chest pain because of inflammation patient is going to have chest pain and patient can have fever also i am writing this plus minus chest pain and fever depending upon whether there is inflammation is present or not if there is inflammation or if there is exudative type of pleural effusion or the cause is exudative then definitely the patient is going to have fever so please underline this fever and mark this fever and chest pain if there in mcq it is written the patient is febrile or the patient is having a history of you know temperature is there then definitely you are going to think about the exudative pleural effusion then my dear friend this clue is going to help you a lot right apart from this there can be you know shifting of the mediastinal shifting of shifting of mediastinum mediastinum but how you are going to see there is a shift of mediastinum towards the contralateral sides my question to you is this only you can see that there is a shift of the mediastinum to, towards the contralateral side is it right to say that you are only going to see upon the chest x-rays 
or is there any other clinical sign where you can see that yes you can suspect the mediastinal has been shifted towards the contralateral side yes my dear friend there is a clinical sign what we call it is trail sign what we call it as trail sign what is this beta now you see this trachea is in the center ye kya hai beta the trachea is in the center but suppose that the patient i am the patient and my lung i am just putting this big camera on this give me a second now understand the concept over here there is a trachea you can understand this trachea is in the middle right my lungs are working properly but now suppose a condition where the patient is having one side of the pleura is totally filled with fluid what will happen it is going to compress the mediastinum towards the contralateral side and the trachea is also going to shift towards the left side if right side pleural effusion due to compression effect the trachea and the lower structure of the mediastinum they are also going to shift towards the left side contralateral side shift will be there this is called as trial sign means shift of the trachea towards the contralateral sign so you can just put your fingers like this thing and you can go and palpate the trachea whether it is in the center or it is going to shift towards any one side right or left whatever the side it is has been shifted means the opposite side is having pleural effusion you can see clinically also or patient can also tell cosmetically it is visible also right so these are some of the clinical features or you can see shift of trachea towards the contralateral side shift of trachea towards contralateral side right shift of the trachea towards the contralateral side so do understand this concept very carefully okay so now a patient has come to you with all these things you know a patient has dyspnea patient has orthopnea patient has cough chest pain uh, shift and all this thing what next you are going to do what next we are going to do you are going to do on percussion on percussion when you are going to do a percussion what you are going to find when you are going to do a percussion what you are going to find you are going to find that there is a yes there is a stony dull node or dull node or you can say it as a stony dull node stony dull node is seen over there okay ji when you are going to put the stethoscope on auscultation what you are going to find auscultation what you are going to find beta you know that the airways when the air flows in the airways it produces a normal vesicle breath sounds right but if the lung is totally collapsed where is the airway the airway is also collapsed so is there any sound no there is no sound so in that particular region you are going to find absent breath sounds absent breath sound beta you are going to find beta absent breath sounds why you are going to find absent breath sounds because the lung has collapsed the air is not able to go into the proper lung because the bronchus has or the airways has totally collapsed because the compression effect that's why you are going to have absent breath sounds got my point okay ji then obviously what investigations you are going to do the first very important investigation we are going to do is the chest x ray chest x ray we are going to do ha ji my question to you is this what findings on the chest x rays we are going to find i repeat the question what are the findings we are going to find upon the chest x rays you have 30 seconds to reply i am waiting for your replies guys chest x rays is going to tell us hanji beta is going to tell us blunting of the yes ashi i do appreciate your answer it is going to tell us about the blunting of the cp angles blunting of cp costophrenic angle right or in massive pleural effusion in massive pleural effusion mpem writing as massive pleural effusion you can see the contralateral shift of the mediastinum contralateral shift of mediastinum you can also see as i told you earlier contralateral shape of mediastinum got my point 
so this is the important finding it can be a bilateral or it's going to be a unilateral thing another thing let me show you the x-rays guys first of all let's see the x-ray over here we do have an x-ray over here right this is going to be a normal x-ray right so here is the x-ray in this x-ray you can find what you can find can you please tell me where is the abnormality in this x-ray Hanji, please tell me where is the abnormality in this x-ray where abnormality where is this abnormality i'm waiting for your replies where is the abnormality guys this x-ray is going to be a pretty normal x-ray first of all you have to i will take another class I, and when we were discussing about the pneumonia i discussed in detail how to interpret the x-ray so i'm just going to take the steps that the first step we are going to look at over here at the you know uh, i am coming from outside towards inside i would like at the skin is there any you know uh, subcutaneous emphysema or no emphysema then i will look at the bones and everything then i am going to look at the cp angles over here now here I can find that the CP angles have a sharp edge over here. Both the CP angles, right and the left CP angle has a very sharp and a clear edge over here. The trachea is centrally located and you know I can see a good bronchovascular markings. The mediastinum is okay. The heart, uh, you know, shadows are okay. The borders are okay. No shadows. The diaphragm curvature is very okay. So this is going to be a very normal, pretty good X-ray. But now my dear friend, I am going to show you X-ray and you have to tell me what this X-ray is having. Hanji. इस एक्सरे में क्या है पूजा भाई बताइए व्हाट इज हैविंग इन दिस एक्सरे व्हाट डू वी हैव इन दिस एक्सरे व्हाट डू वी हैव इन दिस एक्सरे बताइए सर आई एम वेटिंग फॉर योर रिप्लाइज ओवर हियर यू हैव अ प्रीटी नॉर्मल एक्सरे First of all, this is a normal X-ray. What is this X-ray telling us about? Anyone can participate? But a shift of the mediastinum to nahi hai isme. Yes, Ali Almakor, there are bilateral opacities. Opacities, uh, okay. See guys, opacities is, Ashi, I do agree with your point. Now you understand the concept. Here in normal x-ray, first of all, you have to appreciate. Over here, I am giving a zoom, a zoom out picture. You can see and you can appreciate that there is a good CP angle appreciated over here with the sharp edges over here. But can you, it was supposed to be over here in this x-ray. Where is the CP angle? The CP angle has totally gone up to this level. Means, hold this thing, hold this thing is what? This thing is fluid and this fluid has compressed the uh, this uh, uh, both of the cp angles or the lower part of the lungs and this is because of the pleural effusion or extra accumulation of the fluid or collection of the fluid in the pleural effusion so yes it is no cp angle to wash i appreciate your answer so it is going to be a case of bilateral pleural effusion so there is blunting of the pleural spaces right i would like to show you another x-ray and you have to tell me what is in this x-ray what is in this x-ray Hanji, please tell me what is in this x-ray i am waiting for your replies over here where is the cause and what can you find over here i am waiting for your replies Unilateral pleural effusion, agree, shifted mediastinum, appreciated your answer guys. So you can see that on the right side you can appreciate over here that here my dear friend what you can find that the CP angle is normal up on the right side, normal CP angle. But if you look at the left side of this is the left side, so this is the left side, you can find the CP angle was supposed to be here but this CP angle has gone up to this level. So means this all area is filled with the fluid not just it is pushing the fluid but now you can see that this has also shifted the mediastinum this is the spine over here and it has shifted the mediastinum towards the 
contralateral side towards the opposite side and if you look at this area you will appreciate that my dear friend the trachea has gone to this level so this is called as shift of the mediastinum clinically you can put the fingers and this is called as trials sign or trail sign right so this is a case of massive pleural effusion massive pleural effusion is seen massive pleural effusion is seen right massive pleural effusion is seen so guys you should be smart enough to segregate or to recall your knowledge of the radiology that's why in the starting of the class i told you that i am going to discuss this topic where you have to have a grip upon your radiological knowledge so this is the important one where you have to have a grip of the radiological or interpretation of the chest x-rays now let's proceed further now we have done this chest x-rays another important thing which we are going to do is we are going to do is ultrasound of the chest what we are going to do is ultrasound of the chest now what we are going to see upon the ultrasound of the chest we can find that whether the fluid is present or not first of all obviously it is going to be present some more we can actually quantify we can quantify that how much fluid is present is it going to be 100 ml 200 ml 1 liter or more than 1 liter fluid we can also calculate the approximate amount of the fluid which is present so ultrasound chest is going to be the another important thing now you have done chest x-rays now you have done an ultrasound and you know that there is some of how much amount of fluid is there what next you are going to do next my dear friend you are going to do a thoracocentesis what you are going to do you can also do a ct chest but you know uh, ultrasound is uh, fair enough in the case of pleural effusion although if you want to rule out some you know bronchogenic carcinomas or uh, uh, pneumonias or any cavity formation like in exudative tuberculosis there and we know that in tuberculosis cavity formation is quite common so obviously we can do an hrct chest hrct is going to be a again a valuable help for us but although our purpose can be sorted out with just doing a chest x-ray and the ultrasound okay now you have a knowledge that this patient is having pleural effusion and how much fluid is present what next we are going to do next we are going to insert the needle and inserting the needle is called as what with a thoracocentesis it is called as thoracocentesis thoracocentesis right my question to you is this what is the site of thoracocentesis in a case of pleural effusion i repeat my question what is the site of thoracocentesis in a case of pleural effusion bataiye site of thoracocentesis you have 30 seconds guys it is not 9th or 10th yes varun i appreciate your answer it is going to be the fifth intercostal space which line fifth intercostal space which line beta mid axillary line mid axillary line do remember this thing very important fifth intercostal space not clavicular clavicular is this axillary is this so you are going to insert the needle in the fifth intercostal space mid axillary line put a star mark over here one of the favorite and the most important you know uh, mcq uh, you have to know about this thing you do surgery you do medicine you do pulmonary medicine or you do any specialty this question is going to be there and you can encounter in any specialty you are going to encounter this patient right it is not going to be the mid clavicular line it is going to be the mid axillary line do remember this thing okay now suppose you as you as an intern or you as an you know house physician or you as an pg student you have done the thoracocentesis and you have drained how much fluid you need to drain suppose this patient is having approximately 2 liters of fluid how much fluid you need to drain in one setting how much fluid you need to drain do remember this thing i am writing in this red color you need to drain only up to 1500 ml of fluid needs to be drained 1500 ml of fluid in one 
फ्लूड इज मैक्सिमम मैक्सिमम ड्रेन इन वन सिटिंग मीन सिटिंग इन वन टाइम यू आर गोइंग टू पुट द नीडल एंड यू आर गोइंग टू टेक ऑफ दिस फिफ्टीन हंड्रेड एप्पल ऑफ द मैक्सिमम फ्लूड Why you are going to take fifteen hundred ml of the fluid? Why not it is going to be two liters, or why not it is going to be two thousand five hundred ml of the fluid can be drained? It can be drained, right? But I am contraindicating not to go beyond fifteen hundred ml. Why? Why, my dear friend? Simple logic answer is this. Understand the concept over here. This is the lung, and in the lungs we do have you know capillaries. These are the capillaries over here. But understand the concept over here that there is a fluid which is compressing all these pulmonary capillaries over here. So if you have suddenly released all these pulmonary capillaries, they will come in the intravascular pressure will increase suddenly and re-expansion pulmonary edema can occur. They can rupture and re-expansion pulmonary edema can occur because of the sudden increase in the uh, intravascular pressure. So because I am writing over here. because risk of re expansion edema can occur re expansion edema can occur so there is always a risk of re expansion edema that's why up to 1500 ml is the safest one you can also go for 2000 ml but it is going to be a quite risky so the guideline says only up to 1500 ml of the fluid needs to be drained in one sitting to prevent the risk of re expansion edema okay ji now you have done the thracosynthesis you have drained out all the fluid how you are going to segregate based upon the fluid how you are going to segregate whether this is going to be transudative or whether it is going to be exudative we know from the history you have already you know smart enough you are intelligent enough that you have segregated already in your brain this is going to be transudative or exudative based upon the history you are the question but my question is this that what criteria is the criteria upon which you are going to say sir it is transudative or it is going to be an exudative so the criteria is called as yes beta it is going to called as lights criteria lights criteria very very important now why it is lights criteria why it is not tube light why it is not fan criteria or why it is not ac criteria just to joke guys yes can you please tell me anyone can tell me why they have specifically mentioned the name as the lights criteria why it is not some you know um, another they have not given the other name um, to this criteria haan ji why not why only lights although you know i am just putting in your knowledge that there is a doctor he is a gem of a person uh, that his name is dr richard light what is his name dr richard light that person has dedicated whole of life just to study the abnormalities or the diseases of the pleura he is a uk based doctor and this doctor has given tremendous work in the field of pleural spaces or in the field of respiratory medicine but his area of concern was this pleural spaces and he made a criteria and which is widely accepted and to facilitate or to appreciate his work the societies has given this name as the lights criteria by the name of dr richard light so lights criteria as is name so what they have told us they have told us very to segregate this transudative and pleural effusion into two parts so let's talk about this thing just let me make a table right so we do have one thing just a, guys just a second let me draw the table okay ji so on one side we do have what beta we do have the content here i am going to write the content what we have to look and here i am going to write what you are going to see in uh, what you call it as a transudative in transudative in transudative and here we are going to see in exudative pleural effusion in exudative type of pleural effusion the first very important thing which we are going to look is the pleural fluid protein to serum protein ratio what we are going to look pleural fluid protein 
pleural fluid protein so do remember this i am talking about the pleural fluid protein to serum protein ratio so serum protein ratio i am talking about right so do underline this thing here i am talking about so i am going to compare the pleural fluid as well as the serum protein ideally both the pleural fluid as well as the serum fluid needs the sample of the serum fluid needs to be taken at the time when you are bringing the fluid this is the best you can do so what you are going to see over here if the ratio is less than 0.5 it is going to be the transudative if the ratio is going to be more than 0.5 it is going to be the exudative type of pleural effusion another thing which we are going to look is my dear friend is pleural fluid ldh pleural fluid ldh lactate dehydrogenase to serum ldh to serum ldh ratio again we are going to look for the ratio here my dear friend what you are going to look that if the pleural fluid ldh to serum ldh is less than 0.6 is less than 0.6 it is going to be the transudative if it is going to be more than 0.6 it is going to be the exudative type of pleural effusion right third one is third one is what beta we are going to look if the pleural fluid pro if the pleural fluid ldh is two third very important two third the upper limit of serum ldh is two third the upper limit of serum ldh upper limit of serum ldh means if it is less than the two third the upper limit of serum ldh it is going to be the transudative type of pleural effusion if it is going to be more than it is going to be the exudative type of pleural effusion so pleural fluid ldh is two third the upper limit if it is less than two third it is going to be transudative more than two third it is going to be the exudative type of pleural effusion apart from this we are going to look for the ada adenosine deaminase test adenosine deaminase test we know that it plays an important role in the pathogenesis of tuberculosis so tuberculosis comes under which category transudative or exudative beta han ji ada is going to be less than 45 here we know if the ada is more than 45 it is going to be the exudative and underline this it is very important clinically you have to rule out the whether the cause is extra pulmonary tuberculosis just be looking at the ada level if it is more than 45 do remember this thing that it is going to be what kind of pleural effusion it is going to be tubercular pleural effusion the cause of this pleural effusion is exudative and among the exudative causes it is going to be the tubercular pleural effusion right apart from this you can look for the pleural fluid sugars pleural fluid sugar right it is going to be more than 60 over here and here it is going to be less than 60 mg per deciliter i am talking about 60 mg per deciliter ha ji can you please tell me now you can see over here from all this criteria ha ji i am just um, zooming in that all this criteria from here you can find in transudative everything was on a lower side less than 0.5 less than 0.6 less than 2/3 easy to remember in transudative kya hai beta everything is on a lower side less 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 but if you look at the sugars if you look at the sugars here in transudative the sugar is on a higher side it is going to be more than 60 but vice versa over here it is going to be more less than 60 mg per deciliter in exudative my question is very simple why in exudative type of pleural effusion sugars are on a lower side why kyun han ji why it is going to be there can you please tell me utilized maybe what utilized sir what is utilized can you please tell me yes varun i appreciate your answer that it is going to be because han ji kyun just a second i am uh, looking at your answers
bacteria uses sugar okay very good we know that the cause of this exudative type of pleural effusion is mainly going to be the bacteria so if the bacteria is there and we know to survive uh, for the survival of the bacteria it is going to you know eat up the sugars that's why it is the sugar is being utilized by the bacteria and the patient is going to have a lesser sugars in exudative type of pleural effusion now you are smart enough you have segregated each and everything now let's come to the treatment so guys what is the treatment of pleural effusion Haji treatment of pleural effusion what is the treatment the first very simple treatment is treat the cause the first very important thing is treat the cause now why i am saying is treat the cause because we know there are different causes let's say this patient is of transudative type of pleural effusion and this patient is having congestive heart failure left ventricular failure are you going to drain again and again maybe one time if there is massive pleural effusion to give temporary relief you may drain the fluid bilaterally you have to drain the fluid aggregate with this thing but after 24 hours or 48 hours or let's say 72 hours the fluid is going to fill again so what we are going to do we are going to treat the basic cause we are going to treat the root cause what was the root cause left ventricular failure so treat the cause what you have to give like diuretics you have to give or treat the coronary artery disease due to which that effusion was getting accumulated maybe the patient has mitral stenosis mitral stenosis is also another cause i am talking about cardiology that is another cause which can cause also pleural effusion all right so treat the mitral stenosis and the pleural effusion will be treated automatically so treat the cause basically second my dear friend obviously if it is going to be the exudative type of pleural effusion you have to give the antibiotics antibiotics you have to give the antibiotics if it is going to be the you know uh, tubercular then start the att start anti tubercular treatment in case of tuberculosis in case of tuberculosis we have to start the att anti tubercular treatment we have to start got my point so treat the cause antibiotics in case of you know exudative type of pleural effusion in case of uh, you know uh, tubercular uh, then you have to give the anti tubercular treatment if it is carcinoma obviously you have to go for radiotherapy or chemotherapy right radiation therapy or chemotherapy based upon the type of the cancer you have to treat the cause again right okay ji and guys if understand the concept over here if it is empyma if it is empyma empyma means beta what it is the collection of the pus pus collection in the pleural effusion what you are going to do you are going to put the intercostal drainage tube icd intercostal drainage tube you are going to insert over there in the pleural spaces right in case of empyma pus is there then obviously you have to drain this and treat according to the culture sensitivity of this pleural effusion right so quickly revise about pleural effusion guys so pleural effusion is what beta it is the extra accumulation of the fluid in the pleural spaces right there are two main causes one is transudative and one is exudative causes exudative means it is non infectious and oh, sorry my transudative means non infectious and exudative means infectious causes causes of transudative pleural effusion cause hypoproteinemia congestive heart failure left ventricular failure nephrotic syndrome or cirrhosis of liver right infections include like pneumonia tuberculosis bronchogenic carcinoma pulmonary infarction meigs syndrome rheumatoid arthritis sle right clinical features this is the important feature that the patient is going to have orthopnea the important feature patient can have cough dry chest pain fever shifting of mediastinum towards the contralateral side shift of the trachea towards the contralateral side trial sign is going to be there on percussion you are going to find a dull stony note on auscultation we are going to find an absent breath sounds investigations first of all we are going to do a chest x ray upon chest x ray what we are going to find that there is going to be a blunting of the costophrenic angles right and in massive uh, pleural effusion what we can find that there is a contralateral shift of the mediastinum as i have discussed or we have discussed in uh, this one uh, x rays right and you can also see the uh, trial sign again then ultrasound chest you can see the fluid clearly you can quantify the how much fluid or how much amount is present uh, of the fluid hrct is also helpful what is the site of thracosynthesis this is the important so put a star mark over here right star mark means the important thracosynthesis site is fifth intercostal space mid axillary line 
how much fluids need to be drained in one sitting 1500 ml of fluid needs to be drained in one sitting why because the risk of re-expansion edema is there if you drain more than 1500 ml right what is this criteria this is the important criteria put a star mark over here upon this right so many questions has come in a direct simple one liner or in a you know framed out question so what you have to look first you have to look for the pleural fluid proteins to serum protein ratio transudative less than 0.5 exudative it is going to be more than 0.5 right pleural fluid ldh to serum ldh it is going to be less than 0.6 and in exudative it is going to be more than 0.6 pleural fluid ldh is two third the upper limit of serum ldh less than two third there in exudative it is going to be more than two third the upper limit then we have to check for the uh, ad adenosine dmnase if it is less than 45 it is non tubercular if it is more than 45 as we discussed it is going to be a tubercular pleural effusion then we have to check for the pleural fluid sugars less than uh, 60 it is exudative more than 60 normal sugars have beta then it is going to be uh, this one exudative or sorry transudative type of pleural effusion treatment what is the treatment treat the cause you have to give antibiotic based upon you the the cause if it is tubercular start the attb att right anti tubercular treatment and if it is already pus then you have to put the intercostal drainage tube guide so this was all about a quick review of the pleural effusion right there are so many things to be discussed in the pleural effusion i request all of you to please uh, you know follow uh, the unacademy app to have a detailed discussion right Okay, so any queries, any questions? So any query, any questions guys? So please follow this unacademy uh, uh, you know offers you can get a 20 percent flat off on all need pg subscriptions right so guys i really appreciate your presence over here in this class and i request all of you to please keep on revising the things and start doing you know not just hard work start doing the smart work also try to figure out the clues in the mcq this is going to be you know the path maker for you in your success so with this appreciation i would like to take a hello from all of you and i thank you all for today's session i will see you in the next session may god always bless you keep on revising the things and keep studying medicine thank you very much guys thank you